A human cell is an interesting place. There are lots of processes going on inside that keep it alive. Some of the most essential processes are carried out with the help of microtubules, long tubes spanning across the cell. Besides material transportation and maintaining the cell shape, they also play a crucial role in cell division. To be able to fulfill all these tasks, microtubules have to constantly rearrange. This process is called dynamic instability and we can observe it through a microscope. To understand what drives dynamic instability, we would have to zoom in far enough to see the individual molecules. Molecules cannot be seen because they are smaller than a wavelength of light. We can show abstracted versions of them using computer visualization. Animations explaining things like dynamic instability often do this through simplified diagrams that illustrate the process. But what if you wanted to sketch an idea of how molecular processes look like if you could see them? What if we try to show the nano world as realistically as possible? This is tubulin, a protein consisting of two tightly bound molecules, alpha tubulin and beta tubulin. Scattered throughout the cell, the tubulin molecules naturally form long chains called protofilaments. Protofilaments tend to bundle up into hollow tubular structures, microtubules. They are 24 nanometers in diameter and generally consist of 13 protofilaments. When assembling into a microtubule, both alpha and beta tubulin are bound to a molecule of guanosine triphosphate, or GTP. After some time, the GTP bound to the beta tubulin breaks down into guanosine diphosphate, or GDP, in a process called hydrolysis. The GDP tubulins highlighted here in blue color, do not form such a stable lattice as the GTP tubulins do. When the hydrolysis catches up with the growing end of the microtubule, the growth stops and the whole structure becomes unstable. This event is called a catastrophe, and at this point, the microtubule starts to break down. Shortly afterwards, the disassembly stops in an event called a rescue, and the microtubule starts to grow again. So, what is the real speed of this process? We can measure the length of microtubules in microscopic images over a period of time. This is associated with uncertainty, which is due to varying growth rates and measurement errors. The two red lines show the standard deviation of the length of the microtubule at any given point in time. When we show the growth of a microtubule in realistic speed, we would not see the free molecules at all. They move so quickly that in this magnification, one of them would fly through the screen in one ten millionth of a second. Watching all of these molecules move in their real speed, bumping into each other billions of times a second, would result in a blurry cloud. Computer visualization allows us to slow everything down so much that we can see the individual molecules moving. But keeping the time scale consistent, the growth of the microtubule is now too slow to be recognized. We must not forget that tubulins are not the only molecules inside a cell. So, if you could use a microscope to zoom in all the way to the molecular scale, and if you could slow everything down 10 million times, you would see something like this. But you can't. Without computer visualization.